I'm Dr. Altman. I'm here at Fenway Park. We're going to see if we can do some physics. This is a projectile problem involving a baseball player. The baseball player is standing a certain distance from a wall that's located a certain height. He manages to hit the ball over the wall, shooting at some angle and at some velocity. So this type of a physics problem requires the range equation for objects uh, that are not landing at the same spot they're launched at. And that equation is y is equal to tangent theta x minus the acceleration due to gravity, which is g, divided by 2 vi squared, that's the initial velocity squared, cosine squared theta, all that times x squared. Looks like a lot of variables, so we will have derived this already. We were given an opportunity to get into Fenway Park. Fenway Park, a very famous baseball park, and especially for the incredibly tall, and I guess more appropriately, green wall, because they have a relatively short field. So in order to make this competitive, they've got this tall wall, which makes it a little bit more difficult to knock out. The height of the wall is uh, 37 feet and a couple of inches, but it turns out to be about 11.32 meters. So that's an extremely tall wall. Lots of fun being there, but a really tall wall. Now the x distance, the distance to that wall, is located uh, a mere 310 feet which is very short for a baseball diamond. That turns into about 94.5 meters. So there's our x and our y distances. We go out to batting practice at Fenway, and uh, it's mayhem, it's a lot of fun. But we managed to catch some people hitting balls right out of the park. And if you uh, sat there and you uh, were able to uh, hit the time it hit, and the time that it cleared the wall, which isn't that easy, came with a time of about, uh, let's say, four seconds. With that information, you could find velocity in the x-axis and velocity in the y-axis. Velocity in the x-axis is easy. That would be uh, the distance in the x-axis, which we know, divided by the time. Average velocity in the x, it goes a certain distance, a certain amount of time, average velocity. Velocity, uh, I'll go ahead and do that, incidentally. Uh, velocity in the y-axis is a little bit trickier. Uh, we know that distance in the y-axis is equal to the initial velocity in the y-axis times the time in the air minus one-half gt squared. And this is for uh, the distance traveled for an object under the influence of acceleration, in this case acceleration due to gravity. So to solve for vy, we'd have to get it by itself. So let's get rid of the one-half at squared by adding it to both sides. y plus one-half gt squared is equal to vyt. So if you divide both sides by t, that should leave, leave you vy squared. So go ahead and try that yourself, see what you get. And now with the velocity in the x and velocity in the y, we can find the actual velocity because of the vector nature of velocity. The actual velocity the ball is hit at is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So velocity squared is equal to vy squared plus vx squared. So if you take the square root of vy squared plus vx squared, it'll give you the actual velocity. And the angle, the tangent of the angle, is equal to vy divided by vx. And so the angle is equal to the inverse tangent of vy divided by vx. Plug that information in and see how much you can get.